the last charging process. Uh, before we get to the last charging process, though, I just want to do a quick review of what we've talked about so far. First off, what is a charging process? Okay, well, a charging process is going to be any process where there is a net transfer of electrons on or off an object. Right, net transfer on, the thing becomes negative, net transfer off, the thing becomes positive, assuming it's neutral to start with. Great, so from there, let's just quickly talk about polarization, which is not a charging process. Well, why is, there, why is polarization not a charging process, right? So not a charging process, because we said in polarization, there is no transfer of electrons on or off the object, okay? But nearly what, what happens is that there's a redistribution of the existing electron structure, okay? One end becomes more negative, uh, leaving the other side to be positive where the electrons were pushed away from or drawn away from. So that's what's happening in polarization, but not a charging process. So what were our charging processes? Well, we had two so far. The first was charging by friction, right? That was me rubbing my balloon with my head or uh, the green strip on the fur or the tie with the piece of glass, what have you. The important thing here is I start with two neutral objects and I end up with one ends up positive and one ends negative. And so what's happening there is we have our uh, transfer of electrons from the positive thing uh, to the negative thing. So now this thing is missing electrons, this thing has excess electrons. Cool, the second one is charging by conduction, and this we start with one neutral and one charged object, whether that's positive or negative. And what we end up with here is that each ends up with the same sign or flavor of charge. Right? Here, the important thing to remember is I'm not saying the same amount of charge because it might not be an exactly same amount, uh, just that the charge is going to move from high electron concentration to low electron concentration until we have a balance of concentrations. More on that later, right? So if I have a negative object and a neutral object and I put them together, they both end up negative. If I have a positive object and a neutral object and I put them together, they both end up positive, right? In this case, electrons are transferred from the, the negative thing to the neutral thing, high electron concentration to low electron concentration or lower. Here from the neutral thing to the positive thing, because uh, this is a higher electron concentration to lower electro electron concentration, right? So this object lost electrons. Uh, this one actually gained some electrons so that they're both positive. Here, this uh, lost electrons, this gained electrons. So that's what's happening there. Now, I want you to think about charging by conduction as a very uh, direct process, right? The charged object is physically touching the uncharged object. So what we're gonna talk about now is the third charging process, which is going to be charging by, put a three there, charging by what's called induction, okay? So uh, let's just go through the basics of it, then I'm gonna show you the process. So we're gonna start with one charged object and one neutral object. Okay, so very much the same sort of starting point as charging by conduction. The difference here, or actually let's just go back to here, charging by conduction. It's super important that what's happening in charging by conduction is that the charged object physically touches the uncharged object, okay? Charging by induction, the charged object 
will never touch the neutral object. And that's gonna be super important for what's going on here. Uh, and that sounds weird, how can you have a charging process where there's no contact between the charged object and the uncharged object? Well, the, the critical thing here is that there's no contact between the charged object and the uncharged object, but there is other contact involved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate this. Uh, so I'm gonna move uh, my camera around here to set it up so you can actually see me. All right, there we go. Uh, I will be sitting back there in just a moment. And here we go. So what do I have? I have this metal sphere here. And what I want you to notice about the metal sphere here is, right, metal sphere. And here, this is a uh, plastic uh, stand. So this is an insulator, this is a conductor. That means that this thing is not grounded because there is no path from the earth up to the sphere. This is what's called electrically insulated, okay? So there is my metal sphere and I've now grounded it. So I now know this is neutral. So this is my neutral object, great. So I'm gonna take my balloon, rub it off. Okay, hopefully you can see it's nice and charged. And so what's happening here in the charging by induction process? Well, once again, my balloon is highly negative because that's what happens to rubber when it's rubbed with fur. I mean, like the hair is essentially fur, right? There we go, nice and charged. So this is highly negative and I bring it close. Now, here's the thing. I'm never gonna touch the balloon to this, but that doesn't mean I'm not going, that nothing's gonna touch this object. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna ground this object. And that seems weird, right? Because we've so far just said grounding is related to neutralization. But during that grounding video, I tried to make it very clear that grounding and neutralization are not necessarily the same thing. When I ground a charged object, it does indeed neutralize it. But this is a neutral object and I've grounded it. So why do I do that? Well, if I had just brought this negative object close by, this sphere would have polarized, right? Some of the electrons from this side would get repelled over to this side. So this end would uh, express a negative, leaving this side positive. Now those two, these two things should technically attract, but I'm holding things in place and this is not gonna move because it's on the stand. The force is not strong enough to make it tip over. But So that would be what would normally happen. But instead what's gonna happen here is, I'm gonna ground this and then bring this close by. So the electrons that are on this side of the object now, well, they wanna to get to the other side of the object and get as far away as possible. But now that the ground is there, far away is a lot further than it was before because the electrons are literally leaving the sphere into my hand to the ground. Because remember, I'm a human being, I'm made of water, and I am a good conductor of electricity. So right now, uh, electrons have left the sphere. As long as I now move my hand away, the electrons can't come back because I've broken the conductive pathway. This sphere is positive. So I used a negative thing to create something charged positive. Kind of freaky. Um, so it's actually too humid of a day. I'm not gonna be able to test this. This charge is not gonna last as long as I would like because uh, the humid air technically is grounding this as we're going along and it's not gonna stay charged as long as I would like. Um, but that's the argument there. Now, it doesn't even necessarily need to be a ground. Um, I guess I could actually even, if I had something else on, uh, here we go, on a, a stand, here's a metal object. <laughs> And I have my two metal objects in contact with one another. You actually hear a click there, it, it worked. If I now bring this negative charge object close by, right, once again, the metal sphere is gonna polarize or wants to polarize, but the charges can go even further onto the quad can. And now if I separate them, this thing has become positive and that thing has become negative. Essentially, the thing in charging by induction is you just need to give the excess electrons a place to go. Right? Oh, actually, I don't, know, I don't know if you heard it, but I heard a click, like this thing was actually charged. Now, if I'd done this process rather than with uh, um, a negative object or a positive object, right? I'm not gonna get a good charge here, but let's just talk about it. So this is possibly charged. If I ground this now, what's gonna happen is electrons are gonna get drawn up from the ground onto the object and let go, and now there's excess electrons on my sphere. Voila, a positive thing caused this thing to become negative. 
So that's what's going on. Now the sequence is really important here because if I were to remove the charged object before removing the ground, things would just go back to normal, right? So it's, it's important there that I ground this, remove the ground, then remove the charged object. And the result here is that the, the object that you're trying to charge gains the opposite flavor as what charges it. So we're gonna write some notes about that. So I'm gonna grab the uh, uh, camera, so get ready for a, a little bit of a trip.